2 Samuel chapter 6. Amen. I said, good God bless you to those who may be watching us by streaming. You may see this on YouTube. God bless you. Uh, 2 Samuel chapter 6. And if y'all say amen, y'all help me preach today, then we're going to preach and then I'll let you go. Amen. And we'll have communion today as well. 2 Samuel chapter 6. Once you have it, stand to your feet. Amen. Amen. Those of you who shouted, please don't go to sleep once I preach. I know sometimes the energy goes out of your body. Amen. Amen. Pray for the virtue, brother Jim. Second <laughs> uh, Samuel chapter 6. We're going to start at the 12th verse. Will you have it? Say amen. Okay, come on. I want you to say it like soldiers in the army. When you have it, say amen. All right, there we go. And it was told King David saying, The Lord hath blessed the house of Obedi and all that pertaineth unto him because of the ark of God. So David went and brought the ark of God from the house of Obedi into the city of David with gladness. And it was so that when they that bear the ark of the Lord had gone six paces, he sacrificed oxen and fatlings. And David danced before the Lord with all his might, and David was girded with a linen ephah. And so David and all the house of Israel brought up the ark of the Lord with shouting and with the sound of the trumpet. And as the ark of the Lord came into the city of David, Michelle, Saul's daughter, looked through a window and saw King David leaping and dancing before the Lord, and she despised him in her heart. And they brought in the ark of the Lord and set it at his place in the midst of the tabernacle that David had pitched for it. And David offered burnt offerings and a peace offering before the Lord. And as soon as David had made an end of offering, burnt offerings and a peace offering, he blessed the people in the name of the Lord of hosts. And he dealt among all the people, even among the whole multitude of Israel, as well to the women as men, to everyone cake of bread and of a good piece of flesh and of a flagon of wine. So all the people departed everyone to his house. And David returned to bless his household and Michal, the daughter of Saul, came out to meet David and said, How glorious was the king of Israel today. She said, Well, you put on a show today, David. Who uncovered himself today in the eyes of the handmaid of servants? As one of the vain fellows shamelessly uncovered himself. And David said unto Michal, It was before the Lord which chose me before thy father and before all his house to appoint me ruler over the people of the Lord, over Israel. Therefore will I play before the Lord, and I will yet be more vile than thus, and I will be base in my own sight, and of the maid servant which thou hast spoken of, and of them shall I be had in honor. Therefore, Mehal, the daughter of Saul, had no child unto the day of her death. I want to take my text be from verse 21 and the, the A, A clause here. And David said unto Mehal, it was before the Lord. I want to preach from this topic, staying before the Lord. Amen. Staying before the Lord. The Lord, Father, bless us today. Preach your word with power and authority. God, let us hear what the church needs to hear, that we may grow and that we may understand how to worship and to praise you and stay before you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Staying before the Lord. We are all born into this world as extremely needy creatures. At childbirth, we learn that babies need to be touched. We hear a little baby today, we hear some babies 
ear. You look at the babies around the room, they are being touched because babies need to be touched. They need to be nurtured. They Childbirth, we understand that they need to be comforted. They need milk and they need diapers. If you talk to a mother, they say, give me some diapers. You want to get me anything? Give me some diapers and get me some wipes and get me some... Because they need these things because when babies come into the world, they they are needy. They, they, they have a want. They have a need for certain things. And the list of needs perpetuates for the rest of our life. As we pass throughout the obstacles of, of life and we, we go to different stages of life, we realize how much we really need the Lord. Amen. We realize that even though the tough times rain on the sinner and the, uh, the saved, we still would rather go through with God than without God. Do I have a witness? Amen. If God is with us, that means the temptation that was unconquerable is now conquerable. If, if God is with me, the hurt and the pain that I'm going through, I now can overcome the hurt and pain because I now have God with me. That is the difference from being in the world and being unsaved and being a sinner. You don't necessarily have God with you. He can see you, but you don't have his presence with you. Amen. If God is with us, then whatever we go through, our circumstances, our problems, our difficulties, are plowed through by the enabling power of God helping us to solve our issues or to overcome them by walking through the situation with us. Yes, Lord. Somebody say, God is with us. God is with us. He makes us, that's, as the Bible says, more than conquerors. You know, with God, I can conquer a few things, but with God, I can conquer. I'm a more than conqueror. I'm not just a conqueror, but I'm more than victorious. I'm not just victorious. I've got God with me, and if God did that for us while we were sinners, the Bible says he died for us while we were sinners. Now that God is joined with us, I'm more powerful because I got power on my side. Amen. With brevity, God instantaneously takes me from a victim to a victor. Mm -hmm. It is in sin when we were sick and we were soiled in the misery that we had to overcome. The misery that we had to overcome being that many of us in our childhood had things we wish that didn't happen to us if we be true. Uh, it, the many of us, we wish that we had the support that some other kids had. You ever went to school and saw people having things and you thought, man, if I would have had that at my house, I might have done better. Uh, uh, there are things that many of us have to be healed from because uh, when we grow up in this environment, we got to remember that we're growing up in a sin-filled environment. And, and Uncle Joey didn't know no better because he grew up being abused. And Uncle Joey turns out to be the abuser when he grows up. And, and, and it begins to perpetuate itself because we become people in a sin-filled environment. And if nobody gets saved, then it con history continues to repeat itself. Amen. Amen. But when we get saved, we are joined with Christ. And God is not like an inadequate or a poor swim coach. God does not just give you a float and tell you to jump into 12 feet of water. No, he swims with you throughout the chaos. He swims with you with, uh, throughout the debris of your issues. He changes me from being helpless to holy. He changes me from being wrong to righteous. He changes broken to blessed. It is in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. It says, he that knew no sin became sin that we might become what? The righteousness of God. Yeah. God joins with me and makes me righteous. That old spirit that used to do stuff, everything that I wanted to do, God comes into my life and he changes me. And then he then corrects my foul spirit. And as David said, he creates in me a clean heart and renews in me a what? A right spirit. Amen. Somebody touch somebody and say, he makes me much more. He, he makes me much more. When God joins with me, he makes me, when he saves me and delivers me, he makes me much more. However, however, there are many that have disregarded the presence of God. 
Yes, Lord. Because we can't have God on our own terms. Yes, Lord. Many of us would love to have God on our own terms. I, I don't want to necessarily get married. I just want to sleep with them. But I want to still be able to carry on in church like I used to. We want God on our own ter terms. Uh, we want God that uh, agrees, and don't throw that at me today now, but we want God that agrees with the gay pride money. We want that type of God. We want God, they put it on the TV, they put it on every station, they put it on every social media platform, and we want God to agree. We want that type of God that agrees with what we want to do. Well, this morning in leadership, we talked about girding about with truth. Truth said that that activity is an abomination to the Lord. Yes. It, it is that lifestyle that, that allows us, it keeps us in bondage. Matter of fact, if you turn to Romans chapter 1, I want you to turn to Romans chapter 1 real quick because God said that they, they knew him but they didn't love him. Uh -huh. Isn't that amazing? Because uh, uh, it, it's, it's an activity and a thought process that can disqualify you from the presence of the Lord. Let's look at Romans chapter 1. And the Bible says in verse 21, because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were they thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. They knew God, but they did not glorify him as God. And don't you know, if your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, there are things that you can do in your body that will glorify God, and then that will disqualify you from the glory of God. Y'all ain't saying amen. All right, so let's look at verse 22. It says, professing themselves to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man, to the birds, the four-footed beasts, and the creeping thing. Wherefore, God also gave them up to uncleanliness. So what God did is he lifted his hand from them because they wanted what they wanted so bad. There are sometimes God will say, because you want it, I'm going to lift my hand and let you have it. Until you get some sense in your head to know that what you want ain't necessarily good for you. So what the Bible says is, is that because they changed the glory of God, a uncorruptible God, into a corruptible being or corruptible man. So that's what we do in our society. The rainbow, uh, and, and the rainbow was in Genesis chapter 8. The rainbow was pure. The rainbow was righteous. The rainbow was honest. The rainbow was the covenant that God established with Noah. He said he would never curse the earth again. And the rainbow was the covenant, the contract that God had with man. Now what we have done, we have taken the rainbow and we have defiled the rainbow. We have polluted the rainbow to mean something that it was never intended to mean. And so that's what man does. We take that which was not corrupt and we corrupt it with our own images. Somebody say man in here. That's what they did because they wanted a God to agree with their reckless lifestyle. And the Bible says God gave them up to your desire. He gave them up to what they want. The worst thing that God can do is give you up to yourself. Uh -huh. yes, Lord. Do I have a witness in here? I told them this morning, sometimes we don't even like ourselves. Amen. Have you ever said to yourself, that was stupid? Have you ever said to yourself that what I just said was silly? What I just did was dumb? That's why, because our enemy, the enemy inside of us is sometimes our enemy. Our inner me is sometimes our enemy. Amen. So God says he gave them up because they wanted a reckless lifestyle. But here it is, I'm going to tell you today, that no matter what the experience or circumstance is in life, the presence of God is desperately needed for all of us. It's needed for guidance, it's needed for protection, and it's needed for, for provision. I'm going to say that again. It's needed for guidance, protection, and provision. Yes, Lord. So the reason in our text today that David determined to bring the ark of God to Jerusalem is because he wanted the presence of God. Yes, Everybody shout the presence of God. The presence of God. 
David wanted above all else the presence of God to be amongst the Israelites. He knew that the presence of God meant God's guidance, his provision, and his protection against the enemies of Israel. So what David wanted to do is move the ark back to Jerusalem, which was a significant milestone because the ark had been misplaced for years. So now at this time, David is moving the ark, and the ark represented the presence of God. David took about 30,000 troops and transported the ark to Jerusalem. The ark is called the ark of the Lord of hosts. It's called the ark of God. It's also called the place where God's presence dwells in a very special manifestation. On the ark was the cherubims, the angelic beings, the guardians of God's holiness. You remember, the ark was placed in the place of the temple or the tabernacle, which is called the holies of holies. Yes. So the ark was the place where his presence would be. Yes. Amen. Amen. The people knew this. They knew what they needed. So David was rejoicing because I can now bring the presence of God back to the place where it needs to be. Yes. Notice in the text, though, that they could only bring the tabernacle or the priest could only go and sacrifice once a year for the atonement in the sins of man. So every year, once a year, he would go in. But the people could bring sacrifices at other times during the year. So they just wanted to be close to the power and the presence of God. Now, on this ark, on this ark was, number one, was the mercy seat. Everybody say the mercy seat. The mercy seat, the mercy seat was the place where the blood would be sprinkled for the sacrifice of the sins of man. So on this ark, they would take the blood of the, bu the bulls and the goats, and they would sacrifice on the mercy seat. So when they came to the presence of God, what they were coming to is a place where I can get mercy. Maybe I've done something wrong, but I can come to the place of God's presence, and I can get what I don't deserve. I can get mercy, something that no man can give to me. I can come to this place. Can you imagine why this was so important to them? Because they could get to a place where nobody else could forgive them of their sins, but they can come to a place and get mercy. Somebody shout mercy. mercy. Number two on this ark was the contract, the law of God. The Ten Commandments was in this ark. And so not only was the mercy seat there, but the contract between man and God was there. What they were supposed to do and live up to was there. The contract was in the presence, which means the agreement that they made with God was in the ark. Amen. What does that mean? There are some things that God is calling us to, but it won't happen with isolation. It will happen through our presence or getting in the presence of God. Amen. There, there's something that God is saying to us even in this hour. That if you want to do a work for me, you got to be concerned and you got to have zeal for his presence. Yes. The reason why David was so happy is because we they were about to bring the power in the presence back to the place of Jerusalem. So when David got so excited about it, he started shouting and screaming and dancing because he can now bring the presence back. Yes, Lord. It's amazing. It's amazing that we get excited about certain things, but not about the presence. Yes, Do we want his presence more than we want a new job? Yes, Do we want his presence more than we want a new husband? Yes. Do we want his presence more than we want a stimulus package? Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. It's amazing that we will line up for a stimulus package. We'll check the media. We'll check the news. We'll go on Facebook. And when they're going to send out the stimulus. But do we seek out the presence of God like that? Amen. People will form and, and, and they will get so excited about creature comforts. Hallelujah. But are we excited about the covenant, about the covenant that we made with God? When we got saved, you know what you did? You made a covenant. You said, yes to your will, yes to your way. God, I want you to save me. And Lord, I want to do whatever I can to please you. That's the covenant. But we got to stay in the presence of God. Because too much of me dishonors the spirit of God in me. I'm going to say that again. 
Too much of me dishonors the spirit of God in me. Yes. My covenant and my carnality cannot live together. Amen. No matter how much we want it to be, my covenant and my carnality can't live together. One of them got to die. The Bible says the flesh and the spirit fight against one another. One of them has to win. Amen. So Paul said in Romans chapter 7, and you can write this down, Paul said, my carnality makes me do what I hate, and the good that I want to do, I don't do. Paul said, I got a struggle in my body, and my body makes me do what I don't want to do. Amen. And then he says, there's a law on the inside of me fighting against the spirit. Paul said, with my mind, I serve the law of my uh, of the law of God, but my flesh I serve the law of sin. Yes, Lord. I, I, I'm dealing with the spiritual warfare that we deal with on a daily basis. My flesh wants to do one thing, but my spirit wants to do another thing. And Paul said, I realize that in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. He says, I find some old wretched man that I am who shall deliver me from this body of death. Here it is in chapter 8, verse 1 of Romans. It says, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit of God. What was Paul saying? I got to learn how to position myself. That's what he said. I got to position myself. Because he says there's no condemnation for them that are what? In Christ Jesus. I, if I position myself right, I can stay in the presence of God. But if I don't position myself, I'm going to be out of the will and the power in the presence of God. And that's what God is saying to us today. We got to remember how important it is for us to seek out the presence of God. See, I don't cuss while I'm in the presence. Y'all ain't saying that to me. I don't talk about people while I'm in the presence. I, I, I don't lie when I, while I'm in the presence. I, 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 don't, I don't cheat on my taxes while I'm in the presence. Y'all quiet. I, I don't do certain things. I, I ain't fornicating in the presence of God. See, when I'm seeking the presence of God, it allows me to be holy and righteous. And that's what God said. I want to bless you, but you got to stay in position with me. Yes, Tell your neighbor, stay in position. That's what's wrong with you. That's why you had an attitude this week. Because you ain't in position. That's why can't nobody talk to you. Because you ain't in position. That's why you struggle this week. Because you ain't in position. He says when you get in position, no good thing shall I withhold from them that walk up rightly. But I need some people that are willing to say I'm going to stay in position with God so I don't miss out on my miracle. God, he will educate you. In his presence. God will help you get off welfare. I know this ain't popular. God, God will help you get off welfare in his presence. Yeah. God, God, God will help you say no to certain things in his presence. God will heal your body, sister Tawana, in his presence. Your son will get off drugs in his presence. Huh? See, you got to understand that there's a value for the presence of God. That's what David understood. He says, if I could get the presence back here, things can change for our nation. If I could get the presence back here, things can change for my family. If I could get the presence of God back here, things can change. No longer will I be bound. I'll be free in the name of Jesus. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. They were bringing the ark from the house of Obed-Edom back to Mount Sinai. In the book of Psalms chapter 24, they begin to talk about this. Do you know that Psalms 24 was a song about them bringing the ark back to Jerusalem? He, he, they were singing a song, Sister Phyllis. I know we all stoic and, and we don't move and we don't shout and we, we, we ain't gonna get carried away and we, we get distracted by so many things. But this is what David said. If you turn your Bible to Psalm 24, verse 1 he began to sing a song as they're carrying the ark back to Jerusalem he says the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof the world and they that dwell therein for he hath founded it upon the seas and established it upon the floods David said as we go I got to remember that the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof he says not just the heavens but everything belongs to God his eyes 
eyes are over the righteous. His ears hear our prayers. And see, that's what you got to understand today. When, when we're going before God, we got to remember that everything is the Lord's. That's why you can't get carried away with creature comforts and things because everything is the Lord's anyway. All God got to do is snap his fingers and you can get sick in your body. All God got to do is snap his fingers and that job that you thought you was, thought you was about to get, it'll go away. Because the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. Yes. Bible says he found this. This is God's company. Yes, sir. Now, yeah, yeah, we, we, we got to understand. We, we, we're God's children. And God is watching over the good and the bad. Everybody say the good and the bad. And God says of the bad, it will be for your good. That's why he says he worked all things out. Hallelujah. For the good of them that love the Lord. Even your bad, God says, I work with him. Anybody ever had something that God worked with that started out bad and it turned out good? Y'all ain't going to say man. You got to understand that there are some bad situations that will happen in your life. That God will turn it out and work it out for your good. Yeah, I know you didn't want to go through the abuse in your childhood or even in your marriage but here's what the Lord said, I can turn that thing around and help you to be an ambassador for me. I can turn that thing around and help you encourage other women. I can turn that thing around and help you encourage other people not to go the same route that you went through. If you let that ministry come up out of you, God says I can use it for the glory of God. Somebody shout the glory. God spoke to me when I was 19 years old and I was driving home from college and I can remember in the second car that I had that came from my auction, I was driving it home from college and on the inside I started seeing smoke rise and I'm wondering what in the world gonna cause smoke to rise from the inside of a car and so I pulled over and underneath they said the Cadillac converter blew up, I didn't even know what it was, I said a Cadillac I, I didn't even understand what it was at the time, they said it blew up on underneath the car and underneath the car was a big old black stain. They said, had you kept driving it, you would have blew up in the car. So here I am driving in the car and on this long road out in the oh man, it was out in, in the country. I was on this long road. I said, well I'm probably about to get lynched out here because it wasn't nothing but good old boys riding down this road. I said, Lord, why does everything have to happen to me? Happen to me? I'm walking down the road and got my thumb out, trying to catch a ride and I'm sitting there complaining, God, why does everything have to happen to me? And you know what the Lord said to me at 19 years old? God said, I'm going to use it. I said, what God? He said, I'm going to use it. He said, I'm taking you through for who you're going to be because you don't know who I've called you to be, but I'm going to use it. So you'll trust me even on a country road. You'll trust me even in the wilderness. You'll trust me even when things fail in your life. You'll trust me when times get hard. God says, I can use it for my glory. Amen. I kept saying that, Lord, why is this happening to me? But then now I understand that God was teaching me to trust him. See, some stuff happened to you so that God can develop that trust in you. See, it is until God calls you to your knees that you begin to understand, I got to have this relationship with him. I, I, I can't just let stuff just tear me apart. Every day I'm up and I'm down and so my, my, my mind is going astray. I feel so, so distracted in the show. God says, you got to trust me even while you're in it. That's why David said, I'm going somewhere. Woo. David said in Psalms 24, he says, Now who shall ascend unto the hill of the Lord? Who shall stand in his holy place? David is singing a song about the ark that they carry. He says, who is able to carry this ark? So if you read 2 Samuel chapter 6 uh, uh, a little bit earlier, you'll find that this man named Uzzah, he had touched the ark because the ark was being carried and the ox stumbled and he caught the ark and God got upset with him and killed him because he touched the ark. Now that seems a little cruel, 
but the Levites were not to, there were certain people that were not supposed to touch the ark, and so when he touched it, he died. What does that mean? There are certain things that can disqualify you if, you're, if you don't stay in the presence of God. See, they had already been given instructions in 2 Chronicles uh, chapter 15 with how to carry it. They weren't supposed to touch it. They were supposed to carry it by some staves, and it was lined up, so they were supposed to walk with it, but they weren't supposed to touch it. And he was warning David that you got to have a value for my presence. Your people got to learn how to have a value for who I am. See, I got to teach you a lesson, even though it seems cruel, but you got to come to church with a thought process that I got a value for the presence of God. I got to get to the glory of God, and it matters how I walk in here. It matters how I live. It matters how I talk. It matters how I think. Somebody shout, it matters. It matters. That's why David said in Psalms 24, verse 3, he says, Who shall, Brother Jimmy, he says, Who shall ascend into the presence, into the hill of the Lord? He says, Who's qualified? Yes, sir. He says, Who's qualified to go to the holy place? Who's qualified? He says, Somebody already has died. So I know there are certain people that are, are not qualified, but he says, Who's qualified? What does he say? Verse 4 of Psalms 24, he says, He that have clean hands in a pure heart. He says, he that who have not lifted up his soul unto vanity nor sworn deceitfully he shall receive the blessings from the Lord. He says, you got to have clean hands. You've got to have a pure heart. If you want the presence of God you got to learn how to sanctify yourself. you got to learn how to put yourself under subjection. If you want the presence of God that's what, that's what David said here. I understand now that there's a different level to going into the presence. I understand now as we carry the glory we're headed somewhere but I got to get myself together if I'm going to walk into the presence of God I got to get myself together if I want the power of God somebody shout hallelujah so he said he said in 2 Samuel chapter 6 verse 6 through 7 he says when they came to the threshing floor Uzzah put forth his hand to the ark of God took hold of it for the oxen shook it and the anger of the Lord was kindled against Uzzah and God smote him there for his error and there he died by the ark of the Lord. Yes, Lord. Psalms 24 tells us to get your hands clean. Amen. Tell your neighbor, get your hands clean. Amen. If you want to stand in this holy place, your hands need to be clean. And we, we, we must say enough is enough. The, the church don't need to babysit no people no more. Hallelujah. If you, you should be dealing with the same struggle that you had from last year to this year. Uh, then, uh, get your hands clean. Uh, he, he said, he said you, you got to learn how to get your hands clean. You can't call on his name on Sunday and then cut somebody out on Monday. You got to get your hands clean. Uh, hallelujah. You're you going to disqualify yourself. If you ain't careful, you're going to disqualify yourself from the glory. You can't have a temporary presentation of love and not have a lifestyle of love. Come on here. Yeah. He says, you got to do right and let right be right and let truth be girded about in your loins. Tell your neighbor, don't disqualify yourself. So I, I know you're working, but don't disqualify yourself. I, I, I know you want this relationship, but don't disqualify yourself. I, I, I know you got things that you want to do, but don't disqualify yourself. He says there is a process, and there is a mannerism to the glory of God, first lady. He says here in 2 Samuel chapter 6, verse 12, it says, And it was told King David, saying, The Lord has blessed the house of Obed-Edom and all that pertained unto him. And David found out that the house was blessed. You know what David did? Because Uzzah died. He said, oh, well, God is blessing again. And he began to shout because God was in the blessing business one more time. And so when he began to shout, David said, they got the ark of the Lord. And the Bible says that they walked six paces. They walked six paces. And you know what they did, Sister Phyllis? They began to worship because they said, well, I guess we're not going to die. God has favored us. And guess what they did? They began to worship. The Bible says 
and they, they begin to sacrifice. Uh, they begin to sacrifice the oxen and the fatlings uh, because they wanted God uh, to know that we're not going to get it wrong this time. Is there anybody in here today to say, I'm ready to get it right this time? Uh, I'm ready to try God for real. Uh, I don't want to disqualify myself from the presence of God. Somebody shout hallelujah. Well, the text says here, he says that they begin to worship the Lord. And they knew because when they worshiped, that they now had favor. They knew that they now had the presence of God. And anytime you've got the presence of God, you ought to take out time and worship him. Uh, every man should, should slip up his hands when, when you've got the presence of God uh, You ought to slip up your hands And say Lord I thank you For the presence of God uh, Is there anybody here today Every woman ought to open up their mouth And say Lord I thank you uh, For the presence of God uh, See David was saying I'll worship you Lord Because you're the same God That helped me defeat the Philistine You're the same God That helped me come out of Saul's house You're the same God That rescued me in the cave And you're the same God That delivered me back then And you're the same God That can deliver me today And I'm so glad That I got God in my life That's what David was saying I'm getting ready to give God my best because I ain't going to let nobody discourage the miracle working power of the presence of God. See, you ought to want people in your life that's in agreement with you. That when we can go together and we can get into the presence of God, you ought to want people in your life that will do what God tells them to do and stop sitting back on their behind. Say, Lord, I'm ready. See, there are too many people huh, that are dragging their feet. Huh, and David said, I'm going to set the example. Huh, and I'm going to give God praise. I tell you real quick, huh, just give God a praise. Huh, yeah. David understood that God had already done some mighty things in his life. And many of us in here, you can testify that God has performed a healing in your life. Many of you can testify that God has saved and delivered you. You can testify and say, God has brought me out of some things in my life. You can testify and say, God is still good. My strength, God is still been good. You want to testify to somebody and say, God is still able, no matter what you're going through. God, God, He's still able. We're gonna let me close here. In 2 Samuel chapter 14, the Bible says, Sister Phyllis, that David danced before the Lord. That the Bible says that when he saw the glory, he began to dance before the Lord. I know some of you don't like to dance, but David said, I don't care what they feel about me. I'm going to dance anyhow. I'm going to praise him anyhow. I'm going to do what he told me to do. And the Bible declares that David put on the ephod, which means David said, I don't care about a title. I don't care about a position. I don't care about being an elder. I don't care about being a bitch. I don't care about being a king. All I want God to know is I'm going to give him praise. I'm going to give him glory. I'm going to shout hallelujah. Shout yes. Yes, Lord. So here as I close, the Bible says David in all of his house of Israel, they brought up the ark of the Lord. And when they brought the ark, they shouted while they brought the ark. They said, praise him, God of the most high. Praise him who delivered us from our enemies. Praise him who kept us in our temptations. Praise him. He's 
the Lord of hosts. Praise him. He's my healer. Praise him. He's my sanctifier. They shout it as they carry the glory of God. David said, I'm going to praise him. They begin blowing the trumpets and shouting in the presence of God. What's with him? I dare you to shout at him and let God know how you feel about him. Let God know that you love him. Let God know how you don't mind praising him. Shout hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, David returned to bless his whole household. And when David returned, the Bible declares that he danced. Now his wife, Miha, began to look out the window. She said, look at David. He's showing himself. Look at David. He ain't got no clothes on. Look at David. He's making a fool of himself. Look at David. He's disregarding our house. Well, David said, I know you don't think that I should be praising the Lord. I know you don't think that I should be rejoicing. But David went back in his He said, I was before the Lord when he chose me. I was before the Lord when he appointed me. I was before the Lord when he brought me out. I was before the Lord. So David said, I'll dance before the Lord because of how good God has been. I dare you to say, I don't mind praising God. I don't mind giving God glory because it was before the Lord that brought me out of some of the new God. I'm willing to look foolish for me serving the Lord. David said, I'm willing to be humiliated because that's how much I love God. I'm willing to be embarrassed because that's how much I love him. Do I have anybody that can testify and say, I'm willing to look foolish because I love God that one time. I'm willing to be humiliated because I love God. Just because I love David said, you ain't seen nothing yet. Everybody in here say you ain't seen nothing yet. Well, if that's true, give God a praise. Oh yes, oh yes, I'm closing it here. But here is what David wanted us to understand that we've got to have a desire for the presence of God. Meaning you can testify and say God has made a way. He's made a way. He's made a way. Can you can testify that he's pulled you through. Can you testify that he's pulled you through? He's pulled you through. He's pulled you through. Can you can testify and say, God, he saved me. He saved me. He saved me. That's why you ought to shout. That's why you ought to praise. Stand to your feet and give God the best praise that you got.
should be to God to, to be to God who chose you while you were in your mess while you were in your sin while you were in your dirt he chose you so how dare us not desire the presence of God when it was God that chose us while we out, were out of his presence it was God that chose us when we wouldn't even choose ourselves and David says, how dare you not dance when he was criticized, criticized for his praise. David said, how dare I not dance? How dare I not shout? How dare I not praise when God has been so good? stand before the Lord. You want to stand before the Lord. You want to stand before the Lord. If you are in the other day and say, I need a shift in my praise. I need a shift in my spirit. I need some things I need to be free from so that I can give God the adequate praise that he deserves. If you're in here, slip your hands up because there are some things that stop you from the presence and the power of God. There's some things that hold you back. And God says, I need more Davis. I need more people who are not impressed with titles, but I need more people who will say, I want to just be in position with you, God. If nobody ever calls my name, I want to be in position with you. If nobody ever see my name up in lights, God, I want to be in position with you. I want to be in position with you that I can be free to praise you, that I can understand the importance of your glory and your presence, that I want to take this disposition back to my home. I want to take it to my job. I want people to know that the glory of God is on me. You are here today and you want that shift. I want you to make your way up to the front. Make your way up to the front real quickly. We're going to pray. I want to pray for the anointing of a shift and a change upon your life. Hallelujah. 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 You don't know what he's done for me. Gave me the victory. 